Good morning, Misfits. You are tuning into another episode of the Misfit Podcast. Full Goon Squad is in the house. Hello, Joe. Yo. What's up? We also have oh, a not very, really in the house. very, very, <laughs> Who's very, 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 very special guest. That is six varies because Paige Semenza is heading back to the CrossFit Games for the sixth time, which is just a absolutely crazy thing to think about, thinking about the history of all of it. But before we get into that, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Sharpen the Axe. You can head to sharpentheaxeco.com, use the code word PAGE, you save 10% on your order, and PAGE gets 10% towards her journey to her sixth CrossFit game. Z. You can also head to properfuel.co, use the code word MISFIT to save. And of course, if you want to follow the program that PAGE follows you around, you can head to misfitathletics.com to get signed up. As always, we are going to start with live chat. I don't know if we have any volunteers here. I will say that I might disappear in this podcast from time to time. I am traveling and the internet is um, kind of on par with the way that this rental looks. It's just a little old. It's a little <laughs> old. So, life chat. Who's up? Uh, speaking of on par, sure, hey. you're muted. Fucking suck it, idiot. Uh, took fourth, me. fourth place out of 45 in a golf tourney. The uh, old Fourth of July golf tournament, yeah. Wow. So I had a uh, had a good outing. I uh, took home a pretty hefty seventy five dollars in pro shop credit. So <laughs> nice, nice. Buy some golf balls. Professional golfer. <laughs> nah, I can't waste money on golf balls. I'll just end up fucking redonating them to the woods. What do you do? Get golf gloves. Golf. Well, I actually Slacks? the first the first tournament I competed in at the beginning of the year, I won a club. I won a wedge. I won. Cool. I walked away with like, with way more money than I expected in pro shop credit, and I've just spent it. At donate the pro it. Shop. I, yeah, donate it. Do you just to buy the, to the woods. like another round? Is that all you use it for? Well, I have a member. I'm a me I have a membership, so it's like I have the equivalent of a year membership at Wyndham, so uh, I can okay. go as much as I want. Uh, Got it. But you can just put it towards if you want to buy like food or drink there. Most of the time, I just pay for like buckets of balls on the driving range or something like that but bags of chips did i miss bags that story because not a lot of it chips. was interesting uh or because <laughs> the internet wasn't working no one will know <laughs> he got fourth place out of 45 people that's pretty solid that's Damn. awesome mm. solid outing i like it I, I got fourth place out of affiliate class out of four people is that good? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me i would have thought you said hot dog eating contest Oh, oh speaking of which, page, sure. except no first. Speaking of which, the right across the uh, parking lot here, we have Cormier's Doghouse that opened up about a month ago, um, and we're going to do an event here in the fall that's going to be the Frankfurter 5K, where you get to eat a Frankfurter, <laughs> run 1K, and eat a Frankfurter. Um, that's both amazing. promotion promotion for them and for us. <laughs> and the guy that <laughs> the guy that uh, owns the place, we had a 24 hour rowathon to celebrate the 10th anniversary. He came over here, he's like. What the fuck are you guys doing? Which is how we walked over and introduced him like, you should be a member at the gym, bro. You'd fit right <laughs> in over here. Fit right in. <laughs> fuck are you asshats doing? Oh, it was we amazing. We had the solo stove out front. It was like 2 a.m. I'm like, first of all, what are you doing leaving the hot dog stand at like 2 a.m.? And he's just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? And he brought off her a box of a box of uh, sea dog biscuits. <laughs> like 2 a.m. Wow. How are you here? 2 a.m. Yeah, sea dog biscuits. I wasn't like sad a about Saturday it. Saturday night. Fuck, it was so <laughs> good. Do you have a puke bucket sponsor for that Frankfurter 5K? <laughs> what I feel bad about is like down the street from where the gym is, the block that we would run for the 1K is a bunch of old folks who live in like these really nice manicured homes that like they really take care. Like the people who like take their leaf blower out and blow their driveway clean like every single day, people are just going to be vomiting in their driveways. <laughs> You have to make call a lot of friends. Frankfurters? Or a bastion of the community you are. Yeah, you say you have to call them for the community. <laughs> Come try CrossFit. It's awesome. Frankfurters. No, nah, it just kind of <laughs> goes with 5K. Frank hey, it Furter. does. <laughs> what kind of hot dogs are those? Sure, but they like fucking beefy, like yeah, they're Chicago fully dogs. Fully loaded Chicago dogs. Ooh. Nice. This this dude oh. has a truck pull up like almost every single day to deliver the buns that are made in Chicago and the dogs that are, I guess, from Chicago as well. But uh, that place is doing pretty well. Place is always packed. Have you? Ted's there. gone a couple times. Can confirm it's good. 
Yeah, yeah. Just a good smash burger. Yeah, I love a good wiener. We're gonna have to make sure sure about that. I mean, I gotta imagine that place is just fucking ripping in the summer. And people Paige, are, are you a hot the, dog eater? The lakes. You like dogs? Um, I don't eat them often, but I would. Okay. Like, you're not averse to nice dogs. Pillow. Not not yeah, part of not the game. Not part it. of games prep. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> oh, there's so much protein oh, in the dog. Is there more protein or fat? Is there protein? It's yeah. definitely more fat. There's yeah. protein and floor shaving, some hair. <laughs> Lips, hips, yeah. and assholes. Have you guys ever seen the, the hot dogs under a microscope? All of the little no. bits and bobs that are in there? Oh my God, oh, yeah. stop. Bring it up, you're gonna make Bring me it up. Eat it. <laughs> Bring it up. I need to see it. Yeah, don't don't look at it if you're squeamish. <laughs> no, I don't like that. <laughs> are things moving? Are there things moving that aren't supposed to be? Is that the... <laughs> I mean, probably. Yeah, probably. Uh, it depends how hot yeah. you cook them. That's how long you microwave them for. <laughs> Fuck. Gross. Paige, did you have a good fourth? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't really know what I've been up to. Like, all the days start to blend together at this part of the season. Yep. I was talking to Drew and Gabe <laughs> earlier last week, or later last week, um, about, like, the upcoming plan, and I'm like, I don't know what days of the weeks it is. I just know that, like, today is a training day or today is not a training day. That's where I'm at. Um, so yeah, life chat is I'm in the thick of it right now. So there's not much else going on. I did get to go and see a fireworks show and, and spend some time with some friends over the weekend. So finding a little bit of balance in there. Yeah. I'm here, Ted. <laughs> yeah. Drew, you are here. You right? are. We can't see yeah. your face. Well, well, who knows? Who knows for how long? <clears throat> So my live chat, if I can get through it without the internet disappearing, not likely. We hear you loud and clear. Yeah. So typically, if myself or my wife is is talking to our Amazon speaker, we're yelling Alexa off. And sorry if I just turned someone's podcast off. Um, <laughs> and Carter, if he hears Alexa, screams off. And then he realizes awesome. <laughs> that it was related to music. So if he hears a song that he doesn't like, he yells off. Um, and you actually can change it. He doesn't have change the he song. Just, he just, he just yelled off to Drew. <laughs> he just yelled off to Drew. Carter was like, yeah, Dad, I don't off. like this fucking song. Off. <laughs> off. Dad, off. Dad, off. <laughs> Mom, That's amazing, off. Though. Dad, <laughs> off. I am the captain now. That's sad. That is sad. It's fun when There's kids no learn fucking words, way though. Drew brought his Alexa on vacation. No, no way. <laughs> I can well, hear you guys for like most of the time when I disappear. It keeps playing uh, you, but it says that I can't talk. Um, I'm gonna, we're going to rapid fire this story. There was a little girl at a restaurant singing the wheels on the bus go round and round to Carter, and he was screaming off at her. Was yes! Like, <laughs> <laughs> he thought Shut that he could turn fuck. her off. Ah. <laughs> uh. Well, in my eventually, own can. eventually you'll be able to. Yeah, eventually, you'll be able to turn those other humans off. It's an outstanding <laughs> skill. It's an outstanding skill to have. Years I'm gonna, so I'm gonna get this question in as fast as possible, and then uh, you guys can do follow ups with Paige. Um, you can take this in any direction. You can go day in the life, or you can just talk about how hard it is. But I think for the listeners, it would be cool for you to tell them what games training is actually like. Uh, what week are you in, Paige? Just for context. Um, so I just wrapped up Hell Week, so peak volume okay. week. Um, so this upcoming week is so the easiest week, right? Yeah, the easiest <laughs> week. That's what Hell Week so usually means. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could give a day in the life of that. Um, so right now I'm still coaching as well, so I still have some other responsibilities outside of just training. <laughs> um, but you know, a day, I'll say a day over the weekend since I have, since I'm off coaching on the weekends. Um, so do a non hell week day page since most of games so, prep is not hell week, okay. like a, a solid um, games prep training day. That's not hell week. Yeah. I mean, they're still, they still are, are pretty similar. Um, yeah. I try to get up, uh, I've been getting up during the week at 5am to be in around six, six thirty. Um, but on the weekends, I'll give myself an extra hour of sleep. So I'll try to get in around seven, seven thirty. Um, but, uh, a lot of like slow moving around to, to mobilize and get ready. And then I'll hit my first sweat check for the day. Um, even though it's 
80, 90 degrees, I still try to get a full 15 minute sweat check in just because I think probably, you know, I, I still think physically my body needs it regardless of how much I'm already sweating at that point. Um, so I usually try to do a conditioning piece first, whether it's a bitch work piece, um, or an interval or a Metcon. Um, I usually stick to just one of those first and then I'll try to get into a little bit of lifting to follow. Um, there's our skill pieces as well and some accessory. Typically my first session will be, um, a conditioning piece, a lift and either skill or accessory. Um, and then I take a bit of a break. Um, I come home, I eat breakfast. I maybe try to get one or two things done while I'm here. Um, and then my second session, again, I'll try to warm up for 12 to 15 minutes again, usually on the longer end. And I'll kind of depends on how I feel. Sometimes I'll go for the lift first. Um, but then from there, I'll get into the second conditioning piece. Um, I try to hit the one that I think I need more priority with first. So I'll hit that in the earlier session. Um, and then, you know, one that, not that they don't have priority, but one that I think I, I can get the most out of, I try to do that first. Um, and then I'll hit the, the next conditioning piece the following day or the following session. Um, and then I'll follow up again with the skill or the accessory, whichever I didn't hit earlier in the day. Um, sometimes I have to coach right afterwards. So it's a, you know, try to eat something and drink something before I'm standing again in the heat for, you know, two or two or three extra hours. Um, and then if I didn't finish up everything in those two sessions, I'll, I'll still try and get the third, the third thing in. And it's usually a much shorter session. Um, but again, I'm also kind of at that point where like I have to really know myself um, if I can handle extra, like um, not to say that I'm skipping pieces, but I have to really priori prioritize the intensity over the volume uh, for some weeks. So um, sometimes that comes into play and I talk with Gabe about that too. So there's there's been a lot more communication with Gabe. Um, throughout these, these last few weeks, uh, similar to last year, but even like years prior, um, way more communication. And that's been a really, really big help, um, with kind of continuing to keep the intensity up. That's like our biggest thing I'd say for, for games training right now is to keep the intensity in the pieces. Do um, you Paige, do you find that you spend significantly more hours in the gym during games prep than yeah. not during games prep? Yeah. Like I, so I have days where I leave my house at six 30 in the morning and then not until seven or eight o'clock at night. Um, I usually can pop home for 30 minutes, maybe an hour tops to do what I need to do here. But I mean, not, otherwise I'm gone. And like, I, I actually feel like guilty. That I'm like leaving my cats all day, but they're also just cats, <laughs> <laughs> but it is, that's been, that's been a majority of the time is like, I will have a quick 20 to 40 minutes to be home. And then it's like, okay, I have to go back. Whether I have to coach, I have a private one-on-one -on -one session or I'm getting back into my training. So I have to really prioritize how I flow the day. Um, and I have to think about that. Like Mondays are my days off. So like I try to pre like mentally plan my whole week as to the the easiest way to flow and what i need for each day um some days i have to have all food and everything planned ahead of time other days i can be a little more flexible because i can stop at my apartment um you you when you were talking about your the training day you kind of you, so you're up pretty early you do conditioning a lift then skill or accessory before you go home and before you eat breakfast does that mean that entire first session is fasted or are you eating something before are you eating like intro workout snacks what's that yeah what's so the fueling look like um i always have like applesauce or or gummies or something um a cliff bar something that even has a little bit of protein in there 
um, for like in the, in the sessions. Um, so if I'm there, it's usually two and a half to three hours for the first session. Um, I always have something beforehand too. Like I like to still get up and have a slow morning. Um, even though it's kind of a quicker, slow morning. Um, sure. yeah, I usually get up around like four forty-five because I, I can't just go in and be like, okay, I'm ready to go. I need like, my body needs to wake up. I need time. What time's um, bedtime page for four forty-five? wake up? Um, I usually am in bed by eight 30. Um, nine is pushing it, but I really <sighs> do try to get a full eight hours in bed. Um, mm. It gets tough on some days. I coach on Tuesdays, like tonight. I coach until eight o'clock. Um, so I'm <laughs> usually <hard>. eating. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually eating dinner early. So like I'm, I've already eaten dinner. I come home and I'll have just a small something before bed. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's really hard to decompress after that. I mean, you guys. Know. Yeah. How do you how do you wind down from that? I mean, personally, like I need at least an hour upon arriving home. Like even sometimes I'll leave the gym after coaching and I'll drive home in a silent car, which I probably yeah. look like a serial killer. If someone were to <laughs> somehow put themselves into my car and I'm just driving home in silence for, yes. you know, the 20 minutes crashing home. your car over headphones, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, Fuck and you, you guys, know, Ted. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know, like you're the class ends at eight, but that doesn't mean you're out at eight, right? You still have to close up, make sure yeah. if the members want to chit chat, you're still, you're still working through that extra 15, 20 minutes that you're there. Um, so um, it is definitely a quiet ride home. And um, sometimes I just really like to put on a show to decompress. So I'll put a show on for 15, 20 minutes just to eat Watch something and, and get my mind off of the day. Um, I actually am really hooked on NCIS. So, oh, okay. you know, I'm a Gibbs fan, big Gibbs fan. So. <laughs> Uh, I've actually been watching it. I don't remember what season, but um, I started at like season twelve, season and I just started <laughs> yeah, exactly. going from there. <laughs> um, Six seasons I'm up to like, a year. Yeah. yeah, I just love the storyline. I don't know. So, and I get like it's it's easy. I get tired watching murder. I guess makes me sleepy. <laughs> murder makes me <laughs> sleepy. <laughs> Fuck. That's a tagline uh, for a t-shirt right there. <laughs> Fuck. Murder makes me sleepy. Oh, so, I yeah. I fucking love a good primetime TV show. I know. Do so you? good. What shows, Hunter? Uh, I, I've watched... Well, Law like... Order. Yeah, I watch... Uh, I watch, Order like, Burn one. Notice. Burn Notice is, what, like, one of my all-time favorite, favorite That's favorite Bravo, shows. right? It was USA when it was, it was yeah. when it was on. But those type of shows, like... There's a com it's a comfort. It's a nostalgic comfort of my yes. younger years. I feel like it's a nineties. Jen and I watch some yeah. network television, but it's usually like uh baking shows, like summer bake off. Mm -hmm. And oh, uh That's the Yeah, I'm not watching I'm not watching below, live prime Below time. deck or below deck we watch a lot of You guys got hooked on that. I remember. reality <laughs> stuff. Yeah, Jen got me hooked on it. She's been watching it for years. <laughs> so yeah, I mean uh, or I'll just go lay. Like sometimes I'm just like, I just want to be horizontal and just lay. <laughs> like, that's, that's just where I'm at with, with training sometimes. So, um, yeah. Drew, are you here? Uh, I got a question for you. Paige. So <laughs> let's, cause I'm assuming he's, yeah. he's troubleshooting. A yeah, bit. That's fine. Um, so I have also been to the game six times. Uh, nice. As a congratulations, <laughs> thank you. Yes, I've almost actually so it might not even be. I think Paige has you been a, a competitor. Tattoo. Yeah, Paige has competed at the CrossFit Games more times than I've I've watched it. Um, what is what is the biggest difference between how you prepared for CrossFit Games one versus CrossFit Games six? Wow. Or I mean, um, you can. I mean, there's probably a lot of differences, but maybe yeah. maybe the most maybe the most obvious one or two is it a training thing? Is it a is it a mindset thing? There's there's a whole lot going on. Yeah, there. there's definitely a little bit of the the mental and physical like are complete uh, changes since uh, year one. So I'll I'll talk about year one individual, which yeah. was 2018. Um, I didn't know how to warm up properly. I didn't know when to really warm up properly. Um, uh, damn it, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like, you know, I feel like we weren't as 
Well, that's... <laughs> yeah, Gabe, Gabe right, cracks, his, knuck, cracks his knuckles, <laughs> touches his toes, maybe, and then... We're good. <laughs> um, but I was also just, like, I was super shy at that time with Gabe. Like, my relationship isn't what it is now, where I'm, like, I could tell him anything and, and feel comfortable to do it. Um, back then, I was very reserved and just so new and such a rookie. Um so I, it's kind of even a blur as to like, how did I warm up? I don't really remember. Um, but how did I fuel? I definitely didn't fuel up well. I didn't think about like proper timing with, with certain events throughout the day. I didn't know how to do any of that. Um, and then each year, um, you kind of just add a new resource into your toolbox. So getting a nutrition coach was a big deal. Um, and someone who, I can trust more than just, Hey, be my coach. Like they're also my friend. And I, you know, there's a mutual respect between us and, um, constantly listening to podcasts and how others are doing it. And just the trial and error of figuring out what works and what doesn't work for me personally. Um, as far as the training goes, like, I remember when Gabe first sent me my sheet for regionals back in 2018. And it's like, a whole like everything listed of like, you have to do this, 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 and this. Um, and I was like, well, I need to give 100% to everything. And I learned very quickly of just how much of a terrible idea that was to be like, I can go zero to a hundred on this Metcon and I could go zero to a hundred on this lift. And I could do that every day on everything. And, um, it really caught up within the first week. So, um, learning how to balance out training and, um, prioritizing certain pieces, uh, has made a huge difference. Do so you, do you find that you do more of the decision-making when it comes to the prioritization of pieces now, or do you feel like Gabe has more input? In yeah, I, I think we collaborate on it. Um, there's things that he will notice, um, He's back pop up in it says higher quality too. Ooh. <laughs> Unlikely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he uh will kind of pick and choose and I, I do the same, but for most of it I'd say we're on the same page with what we think needs to be prioritized. Okay. Hey guys. Oh hey. Oh hey. hey, hey guys. I'm like I'm like sitting on the router now. I got <laughs> it on my head. Sounds like painful. The modem, I'm standing on the modem and the router's on top of my head. I'm going to try <laughs> to get we... a question in here. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we just asked Paige some of the big differences between year one and year six. So you're up Hunter, for, you're burning uh, up his time. You're burning up Drew's time. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Keep the so, router on your head. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, your training partner this year. So, so you train with uh, McKenna Enslin. She is my, um, I am her remote coach. And I was blown away um, when you guys came to visit in terms of the way that you interact with each other, the way that you feed off of each other, the way that you help each other, especially considering um, sort of how long yeah. you guys had been oh, yeah. training together. It's going to put the tinfoil hat on. Especially considering yeah. that you're competing against each other. Is that where you're going? the question. Should I yeah, answer that? Answer that. If, That's a good yeah. question, Paige. <laughs> if he comes back, he can. It's like Mad Libs. Can you figure? Can you figure out the <laughs> question? Noun. I am, I am verb. Here. Oh, oh there he is. is. Sort of here. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I know that a year ago, a full year ago, training with you on certain pieces was very stressful for her because there was an expectation there. Um. So what I want to know is, what's it like training with her, and can you speak to? how you guys have developed that kind of relationship? Uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, I'll think back to last year going through a back injury, like McKenna had started following misfit end of 2022 into 23, um, around that time. So, we did start doing some training pieces together. She was still doing a lot of, uh, like later evening training because she was still in school and um, she wasn't working full time then. So we really didn't train a whole ton 
that time, at that time, we started to try coming into the open and to quarterfinals. And um, I think we both were just kind of like, we don't know how each other interact yet when it comes to training. And, um, you know, I always forget that, like, I am the games athlete, that I am the older, like, person in within the dynamic. And um, I don't know. I just always think that I'm the youngest and but totally not the case. And so I think we were both just a little bit of like, we need to figure each other out. Um, but are we competitive with each other? Are we not? Like there was, I'm sure some tension back then, uh, <clears throat> quarterfinals, I think her being in a position where like her goal was to make semifinals, uh, probably just put a lot of her own like inner like stress on herself. Um, and then having someone that's already kind of at that level to compete head to head with probably did, like Drew said, put a higher expectation on her. And it probably came more from within herself, um, putting that expectation on herself. Um, but also like I was competitive too, like I didn't want to lose. <laughs> um, so we were just still so new with that dynamic. And um, then I ended up hurting my back and training for semifinals just took a whole different uh, direction for me. So we didn't train a whole ton. Uh, I very much backed off a lot because I just didn't know how to deal with my own mental stress and like the whole, you know, how do I keep modifying things to keep me going? Am I going to be okay to, to compete come semifinals? Like I just wasn't sure of, of all of that. You know, it was very uncertain. Um, so looking back at that year and then getting into post 2023 games, um, I kind of went through a lot of personal struggles and McKenna and I had, we weren't really training together at that time. I was still not getting, I wasn't getting up early to train with her. Um, anyway, fast forward, we, I, I'm going through this personal struggle. I'm talking with Gabe trying to figure out like what changes I can make personally that will better myself. Um, and, you know, it, at the same time, a blessing for her too. Uh, I decided to start getting up early to train with McKenna um, and seeing how we kind of had these like points of tension last year. Um, and maybe she doesn't feel that way. Maybe it's just me, but feeling a little bit of that competition tension last year, I knew that if we were going to be together for days and hours and hours in the gym together, that that is not going to be healthy for either of us. Um, so I think from the very beginning, it was setting the tone of like, we are friends first. And, um, you know, she really helped me get through some like dark personal struggles at that time. So, um, she was really there for me as much as I needed her to be. And she probably doesn't even know that. So was the um, personal, the personal relationship, the thing that kind of set the tone for the, the training relationship, because it sounds to me like yeah. there wasn't necessarily a single event that was like, all right, we're going to sit down at a coffee shop and we're going to talk this shit out because both of us could use one another to get a lot fitter yeah. and be the best version of ourselves. Um, <laughs> it was more like, Hey, let's just get to know one another and, you know, put ourselves out there to each other so that we feel yeah. more comfortable, like sharing ourselves so that we become closer friends first. And that will help repair or help, uh, I guess maybe augment the, the relationship we have in the gym together. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Yeah. I'd say it was more of that kind of organic and every time something came up, whether it was the open or quarterfinals, I was very much like, Hey, we're going to go and compete together. Um, but let's make sure that we have this boundary set like for ourselves of like, we are going to go compete and we're going to go hard. But when it's over, like we're still okay to give each other a high five, give each other a hug, be supportive of each other, regardless of our own performances. So, um, and I think for McKenna, like she needs, she needs kind of that mental resiliency to like, like she needs that reassurance. I'll, I'll say it that way. She, like, I think we both mm. wanted to, to just know that like, whatever happens, you beat me, I beat you. 
we're doing our best and like we're gonna come back from this and be able to talk about you know what went well for me what went wrong things like that and um, help each other with strategy so there was always a a pre-competition conversation at the gym of hey i'm still here for you if you need me and i'm still gonna go compete and try to beat you but at the end of the day like it's making us both better um yeah that, so yeah we, we do have we did have very open conversations about competing together and training together um we're very much like on the same page with that yeah it seems how was like, it oh sorry go ahead, go ahead. That, no i was just gonna i was just gonna wrap that up it, it's a that's a that's such a mature like mature thing to do and being the the older of the two it's all i, I think of it almost like as like a like sister like you know older younger sister sort of relationship where it's like yeah. where you know and and setting establishing that and just putting that out there i think is super important especially for then uh, there's got to be a lot of folks who listen to this who train with their training partners and when you guys are training at the level that you are it's like there are legitimate implications for placements and like performance and stuff like that where it's like you like Hey, like this, this is these. This is a this is a high level of competition. We both want to succeed, but we don't want to do this at the expense of a personal relationship. Because yeah. at the end of the day, we're going to spend three hundred and sixty days together, not competing at the CrossFit Games or at semifinals. Like we got to be able to, you know, it's way more beneficial for us to to be, you know, friends and to be, you know, and then to also be able to establish and verbalize and put out there that kind of boundary like you said of like hey when it's competition mode like let's compete let's do what we're both training here all year round to do but we have to be able to you know give the high five in the back or whatever like that without any hard feelings um, yeah and i i mean you guys can understand as a remote coach like every athlete responds differently and i know that mckenna is an athlete who doesn't respond to like being super hard on her, like being like, you know, negativity, like that doesn't bode well. Um, and mm. neither does it for me either. So like we, um, are very much the same when it comes to that. Um, and we just pick up each other's slack on bad days. Like, you know, she's had many, many overwhelming days of legless rope climbs and things that she doesn't love. And, you know, before the breakdown happens, I'm like, okay, after this Metcon, hey, let's go for a walk um, and talk it out and just get it out of our system. Um, like we both have those days. So um, yeah, we do uh, a really good job with that. And that's something that I hope continues, you know, for, for the years to come. You've made my job very easy, Paige, uh, <laughs> in, in a sense, because there are moments where, you know, the mind of a young athlete, do I belong here? Can I do this? And I'm like, are you within the vicinity of Paige in most of these workouts? She's like, yes. I'm like, yeah, okay. So we're good. <laughs> we're good. Yeah. Like, I mean, my, I think my biggest moment was at semifinals. Um, it was right before the legless rope climb workout. And I can just kind of see like McKenna's body language change. Um, and I think this might have even been before she really started warming up. <clears throat> um, and I was like, hey, let's go for a walk. Like, and that, that's just kind of our thing now is like, hey, let's go for a walk. Um, so her and I, we went outside and uh, we went for a walk. She got some tears out. She said what she needed to say to help her feel better and just get it off of her chest. Um, and her biggest thing is just not wanting to let somebody else down. And just the reassurance of whatever you do out there, you're still going to have your people here supporting you and be super, super proud of you. Um, and I think that really went a long way for her. She ended up finishing the workout that she didn't think she was going to finish. And that was like the highlight of all of our weekends. So um, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if you mentioned, Paige, I haven't been here for most of the podcast. Um, I don't know if you <laughs> mentioned that what spurred you taking that walk with her but telling her that she could finish that workout. Um, yeah. There was definitely a, a look to that, but I knew that I had to say it. I knew that but, I had to put it out there. Yeah. 
you said it, I said it too. And I think it just kind of compounded on her mentally. Um, but then, I mean, she, she, she fed into it the way she needed to. So she responded well. And I mean, that's, that's huge. What a moment that was too. Yeah. Coming across that finish line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Drew, do you have more questions or should we dip into some of the uh, social media questions? There's some good ones here. Yeah, I mean, I have questions, but if I disappear, you can trade into those. All right. Um, this is kind of a bigger one, and I selfishly really want to know Paige's response, so I'll have to listen to the podcast when it comes out next week. Um, <laughs> Paige, this idea of it's always darkest before the dawn, you have been through a lot in oh, no. your personal and professional life. Uh, did I disappear again? No, you're good. You're, gonna, you're, you're good. good. You've yeah. been through a lot in the last two years as an athlete, as a human. You are the best version of yourself that I've seen bo in both places. Um, so I just don't know if you, if you want to speak to that. It could just be like a, hey, when life is really hard for other people, like you might be going through something that could turn you into a better version of yourself. Yeah. Um, I think I learned a lot from last year. Uh, that I, you know, you don't know what you're capable of until you're put in those positions. So, um, but sometimes you only ha like, you're only as good as the tools you have mentally and physically to do, to do what you do. Right. So, um, kind of using last year for a lot of reflection going into this year, um, you know, having some very serious, uh, I don't even know if I'd call them problems, but, you know, relationships, things changing, dynamics changing, um, you know, obviously changing again. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> back in 23, like, I, you know, I don't even know how to really say it, but it sucked. Like, it really was just like every That's a good way day. Of saying it. <laughs> yeah, like every day it just sucked. felt like you're in this dark space and you don't know, like, Okay, what is training going to be today? What is just everyday life going to be like today? Like, is my back going to respond well? Um, so, like, you know, you're training for the CrossFit Games, and some people don't understand what that means, but most people listening to this podcast do understand what that means. And it's just the compounding every single day of not knowing how you're going to feel and not knowing what training should look like for that day. Um, like it makes me get really worked up even now. Like it was just like <clears throat> traumatizing to an ex you know, to an extent, to a point. So like competing at the games and doing what I did last year, I'm still like, holy fuck, I don't know how <laughs> all of that happened, but it did. And I owe a lot of that to Gabe of <clears throat> like constantly being willing to help me figure it out. Like, okay, well, that's not feeling good today. Let's try this. Is this feeling good today? Okay. That's not feeling good. All right. Well, let's try this. Like he never gave up on just what can we do today? What can you bring intensity to? And how can we make you feel good mentally and physically what, with what you're doing? Um, and that was just a constant struggle. Uh, like for me, just, you know, kind of sitting in the thick of it every single day. Um, and then, you know, fast forward post 2023 games, uh, still kind of in this weird phase of I'm in pain. Do I want to compete? Uh, let's see what happens if I go to rogue. Am I going to get hurt there again? Um, so still like constant stress, just living in constant stress of that. Um, post rogue, I have some personal things pop up that really, really try to, you know, test me see like what am i really capable of resilience wise and and it just you know really really took its toll um so but again i had my mom i had my dad my family like my brother i have my closest friends here um and i had gabe and i had drew and i had gabe was just like okay well let's go through this off season. Even Drew was like, cherry pick what you need to cherry pick. Um, get to a point where you just can start moving again. Let's solve your back. Let's change all of your squat mechanics and 
let's get you feeling better. Um, and just, I was like, okay, one day at a time, I am going to try and just see if I can get a little bit better. Um, uh, I had made like a recent post about, uh, I think it was before semifinals about giving myself grace. Um, and mentally that was probably a really, really big shift for me is I always was like, Oh, I'm going to put the pressure on. I'm, I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, and this year it was more of like, there's no such thing as perfection. Um, take a step back and go from there. So, um, Drew, I got sidetracked with your question. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been enthralled by the sections of your answers. So you're doing a great job. Um, uh, one, one way that I can bring it, I think back to the, to the season at least is a more macro view of 30th place. So in good at that. Oh, the suspense. I'm on fucking I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> well, do we want to lighten it up? Pop and, us a question, uh, Ted. All right. Yeah. Paige, I, I think that I'll know your answer to this. This one comes from Delaney underscore dog. I don't know if Delaney is a dog, if Delaney <laughs> likes dogs, Delaney goes by dog. If you could try any <laughs> Olympic sport, what would it be? Ooh, I like that. If I could try any Olympic sport. God, I don't even know. What would your guess be? I thought you would just say hockey because, like, I mean, that's an Olympic sport, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. But, like, if I could try an Olympic mm, sport. Okay, yeah. okay. I think I would want to try the the cross-country skiing and then shooting. That one. Biathlon. Ooh. What is it? Yeah. It's called a biathlon. Okay, I would try that yeah. one, I think. Such a I weird the... fucking combination of <laughs> yeah. things. Like, what's well, you so awesome! You're so Nordic through the woods, and then you see a little rabbit, and you're hungry, and you got to blast. I don't it. think they're hunting rabbits. <laughs> well, not <laughs> at the was. Olympics, but that would be awesome. If it was rabbits. They just like released a field of rabbits. It's just the Hunger to... Games. <laughs> it's just the Olympics <laughs> Hunger Games. You just got to run around on skis with guns and shoot. Is a uh, is handball an Olympic sport? Right. Uh, I don't know. It might be. There's so I'm many goddamn stupid fucking Olympic sports. Well, I'm gonna nominate is. sure. I'm gonna nominate Sherb to do ribbon dancing. Oh, Sherb bro! Would be great. Me and Will Ferrell, <laughs> those, crush that. those dainty little calves out there on the floor would look great. So, I'm gonna be a gymnast. No, uh, what's the uh, what's the ski jump? The one where they go like a thousand meters oh, in this fucking one? air. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. what I want to do. I die. The first, my first run, I'd be dead. I think you're uh, too be dead. <laughs> Let me know when you do that, Sherb. I'll I'll watch for sure. That feels like Only a light down underneath game. me. I'll do, right, yeah, that's, I'll catch that's for Hunter then. That's for Hunter. Okay. Then. Light man's game. game. <laughs> I think the like up. I think the like thirty meter high dive would be pretty fun to try. Man, that oh, looks so flop. scary. Yes. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> that is up there. I feel like you break your sternum if you belly flopped from that height. Yeah, Anything, I don't know. Paige? I, I think I would. I think I'd want to play handball. I don't okay. know. Handball just seems fun. Handball is the one that's like basketball, but you. Slammed it on a post. Yeah, a I post. think yeah. I think so. I don't know. Unless it's no, there's a net. There's a there's a there's a net. There's a goalie. What We're American. We're uncultured. We don't play handball in this country. <laughs> At least we played in gym. I think that's why. Hunter, that what trip. are you trying? Um, golf. I feel like it would be. <laughs> is there yeah, golf but in the I. Olympics? There is this here. Yeah. Um. There's yeah, also there's surfing, Paris, right? surfing, surfing in the Olympics too. Um, is there golf in the Olympics? That's what just I, asked. I, yeah, I, be, I'm, I believe so. I think they added it this year. Um, part of me, part of me would just go with a generic play soccer. I wouldn't want to play as terrible as it sounds for the United States. I don't think we're gonna play in the Olympics anyway. But um, but it just it, it's such a it's such a fucking big sport. It would be sick to play in a game with that many people like packed in the stadium but if it's like qualifying round of like fucking tahiti versus canada usa like, usa yeah, yeah usa <laughs> then i'm probably not so yeah it's a, it's a good question would, i feel like i, I want to see look a up list i need to see obscure hold on yeah i need, a, I need a list next next question all right oh, unless drew's here dude I don't know horse long jump hunter horse long horse jump, long jump? <laughs> 
That's ah, awesome. yes. The what does that long mean? Jump. Uh, I think it's exactly what you think it is, Ted. Horse long jumping. <laughs> you just, you're on a runway and you just crank that horse as fast as you can. You try to see how far it can jump. Yeah. So the bra I think a broad jump with a horse. I think a lot of these are no longer Olympic sports, but they were at one point. We have horse long jump, plunge for distance, Ooh, <laughs> which I liked. Like pistol down. dueling. You can go. Down. You'd be terrible at that, sure. No, 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 not not pistol squat. Oh, I think with guns. Fucking ping pong. <laughs> yeah, some good ones. You here. would get devastated in ping pong. Oh, Olympics, fucking bro. annihilated! Devastated. Oh my god! So, annihilated. Hunter, the thing ribbon dancing is called rhythmic gymnastics. That's what you want me to sign up for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you do. All right, this is going off the rails. Gymnastics. Paige, we've got another question for you here. Uh, from canoe slalom. What the fuck is canoe? Go ahead. From Jayla Plant. Uh, you've been in the game for a while. What's kept you going all these years? Oh, people like you, Jackie. Um, Shout what's out, kept Jackie. me going? Uh, I genuinely love it. I, I have the support. Um, I have the potential. I have been a competitor my whole life. Um, and I've gotten better every year. It's really hard to stop when you continue to improve um, and continue to see that your ceiling is higher than you once thought it was. So, can't do it forever. So, I'm going to do it while I can. <laughs> killing it. Killing it. Killing it. Uh, this one's from someone named Joanne Semenza. Mama <laughs> Joe. Uh, if you won the lottery, what's the first thing you would do? Ugh, probably go on a vacation. <laughs> Anywhere specific? Um, would you fly private? Fuck. I mean, if I had the, if get I had those, the lottery, get one of those yeah. beds. Get yeah. one of those beds in first class. That's um, honestly, I feel like I haven't taken like, uh, like we took <laughs> a, a five day vacation like two years ago, and then a small vacation last year, but like. I would really love to just like take a week long vacation and like do excursions and adventure and travel. So probably that. Really dreaming big one week. I know, right? Not <laughs> enough time. You got to get back to training. <laughs> I, I mean, a, a, a 10 day vacation, I think is doable. I just feel yeah. like at that time I'd be like, okay, I'm ready for normal life again. Yeah. Obviously know. the like paying off all debt, you know, all that shit first buying mom a house whatever i think i would buy <laughs> the most expensive tickets to every f1 race on the calendar and what's go, that go for to every race what's uh, that go for what's an expensive ticket probably like 15 grand damn yeah. what yeah that's like paddock access you can like walk around the pit lane before before shit starts drive the car no no <laughs> but our yeah, friends think, our, our friends went to one down in miami Oh shit, um, they went to the Miami. The did, yeah, and there were like nice. there were food trucks there that were selling steaks that were like eighty dollars. Yeah. And that's just yeah, the yeah. food. It's yeah. Nuts. Yeah, it's crazy. Nuts. Jen and I were looking at going to Barcelona next year. And awesome. I think like regular dirt tickets are like seven hundred dollars for the day or something like that. It's silly. But yeah, that's probably what I would do. Yeah, sure, what would you cool. do? <sighs> Fuck, I actually think the vacation is a really good idea. One of the things I've always wanted to do is to go to like Southeast Asia for like a couple months. Like go to like Thailand, go to Cambodia, go to Vietnam, go to all like of those. Like a king like, there with the, with the lottery. Yeah, money. we were actually, we were just looking at this. There's a place and there's a, I think it was Laos that had it where this, this couple stayed for two months and spent like a grand, like 1,000 US dollars for two months. And they're staying at like this five star resort where they swim and they like like the food comes over on a tray that floats over to you. Hold on one second, guys. Uh, FedEx is here. FedEx, Hunter. Jesus, they're dropping you, like would flies. Would you buy a country? There you go. I'm back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. I, honest, honestly, I haven't been on it's a like vacation Cartman Land. long enough no that it play. would be there. Would be a similar. <laughs> it'd be a similar. Your generic, you know, take care of mom, take care of the 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 debts and whatnot. It'd be vacation maybe it's a a decent house and then whatever the rest it, 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 the, it would be dis determining exactly how much money i need to put into a high yield savings account that i could just live off the interest for the rest of my life that that so plan practical. every i could plan everything else around that but 
the such the idea a, would be how do I make this such a practical do, hunter yeah. answer? I'm buying scratch tickets with all of it. I'm saying how much more money. That's I can a make. good idea. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm Put it all on black, kid. Put it all on black. What's Fuck, the worst that can happen? Let's turn the worst that can happen. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> burning for it. that as a quickly quick, as possible. A quick double. I want to buy a trailer park and in no see time. How, far, how fast I can get it confiscated by the police. <laughs> uh, all right, Paige, another one from got? your friend Jackie, I believe. Uh, what's the hardest but most meaningful lesson CrossFit has taught you? Oh God, she lo- she's a therapist. Yeah. So okay, she, she's going to hit me with those questions. Um, <laughs> Deep. I, I don't know. I think this year, um, you know, my, what I'm doing in the gym is not more important than anybody else. Like, like it, it might oh, not yeah. be like the, the it might not be like the, it is one of the biggest lessons. Like, um, what I'm doing isn't more important than somebody else. Like I always can find time to help somebody. Uh, I think of that when it comes to with McKenna, I think of that when it comes to being a coach. Um, so, uh, like I, I never put myself in front of somebody. I never try to come off as like what I'm doing is more important in the gym than somebody else. Um, and I hope to, reflect have that reflected in in my life in general as well so um yeah i think that's i think that's a pretty decent one it's a very decent one yeah very very decent uh drew has a question i don't know if you saw that in the in the comments in the chat i don't know if there's more to that question but it just says from (laughs) at mr coach what was 2020 and 2021 like for you page okay (laughs) <laughs> oh, I thought he was making why. a I, internet connection uh, Zoom joke with that comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, 2021 was COVID. So that was the year of trying to figure out which sanctionals to go to. Um, and then obviously uh, I get up to Atlas Games with, I think, Caroline and Austin were all there. You guys were all there, maybe. Um, and they're closing down the border. And then it was like the end of the season there. We, uh, that was kind of a, a weird year. It's like, what are you doing? What are we doing? What can we do? Um, 2021 was the year of not making it. So missing out on qualifying and, um, deciding that I was going to go all in and try to make it for 2022. And then, um, I really bought into the zone two um, the warm ups, like all the extra things, like all the little details that, you know, make you that 1% better. Um, I really bought in in 2021 and going into my semifinal and, or whatever it was called in 2022 at syndicate crown, I had zero doubt that I would qualify that year. So, um, yeah, is that what I, is that what you were going for, Drew? Clap twice, Drew, if you, that's what you want. <laughs> can't, so smooth, you, so he can't talk, but he can clap, yeah. <laughs> or raise your hand. Isn't there like a raise your hand function in this chat? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Pa- Paige, Sorry. Sure? Yes, okay. I'm here. <laughs> Paige, was that, was not qualifying, did that shift your mindset at all? Like missing yeah. that qualification? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I, I don't know. I had, like, I also feel like I didn't go, I didn't do everything I could have done in 2021. Like, I feel like I left pieces out. Um, and I was really disappointed in myself for that. So I really was like, I want to make it up to myself and, and do it right. Like I wanted to do it the right way. Um, what what did the process look like for you to figure out what the little things you didn't do in 2021 was like how did you sit down and evaluate like i wasn't doing these things i need to do these things moving forward in order to improve um honestly it was the a communication piece was part of it uh with with gabe uh i would try to figure things out on my own instead of just using him more so um, I think that was a big part of it. Um, 
like I had the buy-in around me, uh, but I also like, I don't know, it's weird. I didn't feel like I, I, I gave my, I didn't feel like I put out the effort that I know I'm capable of. Um, and I feel like I did myself a disservice in those years and in those moments of like, oh, well, I already had a really good training day. I don't need to add this extra thing in. Um, and there were days that I would do that. Um, and you can't do that. You can't take shortcuts. Um, I wasn't doing the hard things when I didn't want to, as opposed to now, um, I have days where I don't want to do things, but I know that I can put the effort and the intensity into what it's asking for. Um, and I have to push through the whole, I don't want to do this. Um, I have a lot of, there are quite a few moments like that. There's that, that happens, but it's like, at the end of the day, this is what I love to do. And the hard moments are kind of what make you that more resilient athlete. Um, when you say at the end page, say, once you say at the end too, once you get into those things, the things that you don't want to do, once you get started, it's fine. It's just the, it's like getting started. That's the hardest part. So like, you know, it's convincing yourself that even the days you don't want to do the rowing intervals, if you just sit on the rower and start pulling, even if your first one or your last one or your middle one sucks, like you did good work and you got some volume in where you got some good training intensity in and you, you know, it doesn't need to be an everyday thing, but those days where the, the mental side could be, I'm giving in a little bit, you decided to go and do that. You kind of teach yourself the lesson that like, I'm just putting in some good work here and you know, I don't need to chase perfection. I just need to keep getting better and progress is what we're after anyways. Yeah. Like I, I had a moment over the weekend. Um, we, I had a long bitch work piece to do and everybody had left the gym already from a great, like we had a hip mobility seminar. So like the gym was popping in the morning. It was easy to be in there. Um, and I, so I got started on it and I was still having like this, well, I could finish after the third interval. I don't need to do the next one. And then I finished the third interval and I'm like, all right, I'm here for the next one. And then I'm here for the next one. Like it, it was still even like some days are a constant battle within a piece of like, no, I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to do this. Um, I, I didn't get here by, by taking these shortcuts. So I'm not like, there's, there's just no more questions about it. I'm going to go do the work. Um, and that's been something that's built up over time. Like that wasn't just something where I woke up the next day and I'm this person who can just fight through, you know, the hard days. Like it took a lot of ups and downs. Looks like Drew had said something too. Yes. Yes, he did. Uh, Sherv, do you want to read that message from Drew? Cheer. All right. One of the most important missions of Misfit Athletics is the 50-50 agreement. No matter how far the athlete goes with their effort and attitude, we will aim to match. The coaching staff and the members of the community owe you a thanks for how far you've taken your side of the equation because brought up the best in us as coaches and a company. The programming would not continue to progress at the rate it has every single phase without you, which doesn't seem like a question, more like a statement, but... um. <laughs> I also agree. <laughs> I definitely agree. Well, with thank statement. you. <laughs> yes. Um, it's actually funny. Uh, Hunter, do you remember the article for the blog that you wrote back in, I want to say the end of 2021 about coaching, about being like a coach for an athlete at a competition? Yeah. The thermostat uh, thermometer. Yeah. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I just kind of like by chance read that again this morning. Um, oh, no and shit. yeah, I, I just, it kind of popped up, um, nice. and like, kind of like, you know, Drew had said there, the 50, 50 agreement, like Gabe has been the thermostat to me being like, to really just kind of helping me regulate a lot of emotions, whether it's, uh, being upset that I did poorly, whether it's helping me like tone down the excitement from a really great event. Um, so like he's, we've, we've, it takes so much time to kind of develop that 50, 50 agreement, right? Like, um, but it's, it's more of the constantly those little moments start to build up. And I, I can see that happening with like Drew and McKenna. Um, I could see that have hap like I've seen that with Jenna and, and Sherb and, and you and Kelly, right? Like you develop these relationships where like, 
it's these small moments that you kind of have to continue to chip away to continue to get that more and more buy-in. So it's like the 50, 50 agreement becomes like the hundred to 100 agreement. Like you both can go all in on this thing. And, um, you know, obviously you see the, the benefits of that. Yeah. I think that's a, that's an awesome like assessment of that idea. And it definitely, it takes time for sure. And like you, the, the the left and right lateral limits of what you experience as an athlete slowly expand outward over time right the the you know what you were comfortable sharing with Gabe and what he was comfortable telling you you know about your performance or like your mindset or whatever that that's a pretty narrow band when you get started right but as you spend more and more year literal years training together it's like the the comfortability you have with sharing things with Gabe, right? And therefore, like the upper and lower limits of what you're, you know, you experience emotionally, physically, whatever, gets gets way fucking bigger, right? Yeah. And so to have someone like Gabe, and Gabe is exceptional at that for sure, at, at maintaining that that equilibrium that's so necessary. And you you like I obviously haven't coached you directly. A, a fraction as much as Gabe, but you are already somebody who, who, who I I feel like hangs pretty close to the middle for the most part, save the the extreme ends of of some of tough situations. But um, it's such a it's a it's a really cool thing to see. And you're right, it does take time a lot of time to develop and get comfortable with with kind of the role that each of you play in that relationship. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he's not like he doesn't have daughters because <laughs> he's really good like he's just i don't know we just work well he knows how to like find the right words at the right time it's probably the growing up with a bunch of sisters that beat the yeah, show that's yeah, probably that's what true. it is <laughs> yeah i do tend to forget that sometimes yeah, <laughs> i don't think wild. i knew that uh yeah. we're getting close to the end time i think here on this podcast page but uh before we go i think just i'd like to check in with you mentally we're we're not far out from from showtime how you feeling you excited how's fort worth weighing on your mind like, <laughs> uh yeah at? uh i'm feeling good you know obviously everyone has their hiccups as they go through training for something as big as this so i've had my fair share of hiccups uh along the way but um overall again i learned a lot from last year um and I'm able to really, really put that into practice this year, uh, which to me is very eye opening in how I approach each day, how I approach everybody around me um, and how I approach training. Like I'm still excited to get in and, and get after it. Um, I'm even more excited because as the weeks go on, McKenna's allowed to jump in more and more training pieces with me. Uh, so it's been a little lonely, but uh overall like if her and Wyatt are in the gym like they're still like helping me get after it even though we're not doing the same stuff like they're still like like they know what I'm there to do um so that's that's always super helpful same people or excuse me same with you know Kalina and all of my friends in the gym like they know I'm I'm in there for a reason and there's a big purpose to what I'm doing right now so um, and there's a big purpose for the decisions I make outside of the gym, um, getting to bed early, missing out on, you know, some social engagements, things like that. Um, so, you know, some of those sacrifices aren't always fun to make those decisions. But um, at the end of the day, I really have my eyes on the prize. So I'm excited to get down to Fort Worth. Nice. Yeah. Do you have, do you have any uh, goals placement wise that you want to put out into the universe. <laughs> so I wrote on our, we have a goal board in our gym and like one of mine was top 15 at the games. So that was last year. Yeah. Um, and I, we like, they erased the board and we write it all over again. And I said, okay, but like for real this time, top 15 at the games. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, you know, obviously that's, there's a lot of factors that come into play with that, but I'm going to go and fight for every point. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of factors, but you know you're capable. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Sweet. Drew, you there? Awesome. Do you have any final words that you'd like to? I don't even dare to speak. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know that I'm disappearing before I do. 
because you're like, oh, oh, and there he goes. And I think that I'm still talking to you guys. <laughs> um, He's gone. I'll, 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 give, I'll, give, uh, I'll give a final thought maybe to the podcast, unless, Sherb, you got final thoughts too, but... Um, I think it's I think it's good for for any listener or any aspiring athlete. We've now I don't know how many. Do you know how many times Paige has been on Ted? Uh, or Paige? Like do you know how many times you've been on? Five. I was gonna say five around six. five. Yep. Five, six. Fuck, we should have six. A popular number there. Yeah, we could have been uh, six. Oh. Of the you know five or six times that Paige has been on here, there's always there's always nuggets available for athletes in particular certainly coaches but athletes in particular that you can take away from uh from somebody who is like has the resume to back everything up that she says but also when like there, every time that we're doing a podcast there's something new going on like it's a different to literally a different time in in you know life and in, in the training year and whatever um and there's always something different going on but there's always something different that an athlete can pull from with respect to what Paige is telling us and i think it's it's no coincidence that for you know going to the crossfit games for a sixth time and maintaining such a high level of competition and maintaining a a strong connection to your community within the gym like what you were saying and sure got all fired up and i do too about saying like hey what i'm doing in the gym is no more important than the 60 year old who's pvc pipe overhead squatting you know it's not there what i'm doing isn't more important than that and it's not to say like correct it is not more important it's more of the attitude of which like hey i'm here battling alongside everybody else my goal just happens to be a six straight or a six crossfit games appearance rather than you know whatever everybody else is doing and then you know we're learning about the kind of the mentor student mentor relationship that is developing between you and uh you know mckenna who's kind of who's you know on you guys are on kind of opposite ends of the your you know as far as your career trajectory in the sport of crossfit and it's so cool to see like yeah. you know you have the opportunity to be like that bigger sister type person who's been around the block six times like hey like if there's there's no better resource than that person who's done that so i think um my final thought would just be for anybody listening like if you haven't listened to the other podcast that page has been on um there's a it's a fucking five five edition uh gold mine treasure trove of just valuable information for how to you know how one might go about going to the crossfit game six times or at the very least conducting themselves in such a way that's like so highly respectable that you could take fucking 75th at the CrossFit games and it's like don't fucking care like that's Paige she's a misfit doesn't fucking matter so thanks yeah, for joining matter. us again Paige yeah. but I was just yeah, say I appreciate the the stuff the stuff about the community and like putting it like paying it forward is really important like making sure yeah. like you put out into the world what you hope to receive back is probably one of the things that I you know not probably it is the thing that I think is really rings true when you hear about you know the difference between the professional crossfit athletes of now versus of yesteryear is a lot of them don't work out in affiliates around communities with other people and don't have that support because they fucking work out in their garage or they work out in the middle of the day and no one's around and they don't talk to anybody and like don't bother me don't get in the middle of my fucking handstand walking lane and don't touch my fucking barbell like there's so much of that and it, yeah. a lot of it's like it's potentially fake. Like people are making these things up because they don't see the athletes who are affiliate owners, who are CrossFit Games athletes. It just is a rare breed these days, but it's really like, I resonate a lot with that type of CrossFitter because that's the kind of CrossFitter, you know, we, Hunter and I, and all the guys that started Misfit Athletics years ago, like competing on the blog, set out to be is like just the person who is super involved with CrossFit. We coach CrossFit, we watch CrossFit, we do CrossFit. We are are involved in the CrossFit community, and it's just nice to see, you know, someone talk about being a part of a community that helps propel them in their endeavors in the sport, which is essentially the showcase of what is possible with CrossFit. But always kind of ties back to the roots of what CrossFit really is, which is a really great way to get in shape, a really great way to you know learn valuable lessons about life, but also this tremendous like human movement. I don't mean like exercise, but like movement of like this is the right way to do, you know, 
your fitness program and be involved with other people and what more positive outlet there is than being around others and working really hard and you know having a community that surrounds you that supports you because you put that out into the universe yeah well thanks guys i uh um kind of piggyback off that with uh um there's like we are games athletes but there's a lot of things that you can like there's a lot of relatability and i want to show people that like we have such a human side to us too right and everybody in our gym sees that about me if they get to see that like you know they see my name pop up for the crossfit games on a leaderboard and they're like hey that's my friend right it's not this like superstar person they're like hey that's my friend like friend first or that's my coach um and i always love that and that makes me really proud to to be able to have that within the community um but like to anybody listening to the podcast like i'm an open book like i am happy to uh talk to anybody i i I'd wish more people would reach out so that I can share more experiences again about things that maybe are relatable in some capacity. Um, but uh, lastly, speaking to uh, the community side of it, like there are a few constants within my career, um, you know, starting back in 2018, well, you know, I have the team year in 17, but starting in 2018, there's a few constants. Uh, Misfit Athletics is one, my family, and CrossFit Vertex, like those are some huge constants and, and Impact Physio was one that kind of, that kind of shortly followed after. So um, kind of a, a little nod to those uh, coming up on my game shirt. Um, mm -hmm. So stay tuned for that when that comes out. Um, any chance we have a date on that? So people have, have asked me questions. <laughs> I don't have an exact date, but it is VV soon. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds VV good. Soon. Sounds good. Uh, Paige, I don't have any final thoughts other than thank you for joining us. Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's an honor to be able to call you a misfit and a friend. Friend first. Right back misfit at you. Misfit after. Uh, where can people find you? Um, so at Paige underscore Semenza is my Instagram handle. Um, you can reach out there. Uh, if you're friends with me on Facebook, you can reach out there too. So um, please do. Again, I love talking about this stuff. So you can do it all day. Nice. Yeah. Well, final thoughts. I'm oh, here. Drew has final oh. thoughts. Let's see if we can I'm make it be through. quick. Paige is cool. Um, <laughs> I'm excited to listen to the interview, and I got some fucking bangers coming your way from Mock Games. Can't Get wait. Some extra rest. <laughs> Sounds good. McKenna's gonna be ready too. Love for it. some. Hell yeah. Uh, well, Ted, where do people buy support stuff for yes, Paige? Yes, yes, I was gonna say. Ah. Thanks everybody for listening or watching us and listening to drew uh <laughs> sorry for the technical difficulties the wi-fi sucks sometimes uh but if you want to support the show if you want to support page you can do so by heading to sharpentheaxeco.com this is where said game shirt will be available as always use code page uh properfuel.co for all of your supplementation needs misfitathletics.com if you are trying to be like page and compete like page or teammisfit.com if you'd prefer to be like hunter um, I'm not sure anybody would, but that's Team a tough sales pitch, has some Ted. good work. Team is so. fit for the best Heather. affiliate program on the planet. Don't be like Hunter. <laughs> Don't be like Hunter. Hunter's pretty fit. You can be like him. Take fourth at your golf tournament. But yeah, we have fucking fittest golfer out there for sure. Again, Paige, thanks for joining. Are us. you? I need to. Everybody, need thanks for listening. Sherb, thanks for Fuck behaving off. yourself. I tried really hard, Sherb, Paige. Sherb, I really off. tried hard today. It was hard, but I need it. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Paige.